Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today we are looking at a short story analysis of the story Tell My Son to Hold On to His Gun by Ketre Akosomo Nyantechi. For our lesson objectives for today, we will look at explaining a biography of the author, the title, the setting of the story, its point of view, the plot analysis, characterization, the literary devices in the story, some themes, and we will look at a few likely examination questions. Let's begin with a biography of the author Ketri Akusomu Nyantechi. He is a Ghanaian by birth and naturalized U.S. citizen. He started his education in Ghana and earned four-year teacher's certificate A and proceeded to further his education at the Oklahoma State University in Stillwater. In 1983, he earned his bachelor's degree from the Oklahoma State University. In June of 1987, he taught reading at the LaGuardia Community College, then worked for the New York City Board of Education as a classroom teacher of English. In 1991, he earned his master's degree in creative writing from the Queens College of the City University of New York. His MA thesis, a novella entitled Ancestral Sacrifice, received so much critical praise that he developed it into a novel and published it in 1998. Between 2002 and 2009, Ancestral Sacrifice became the core English literature textbook for senior high schools in Ghana. He is married to Mrs. Alice Safwa Nyantechi and is blessed with five children, Akosua Achenoa Nyantechi, Asafuache Kwabuna Nyantechi, Kwasi Ohine Nyantechi, Akosua Ohine Wa Nyantechi, and Nana Aso Nyantechi. We will now move on and look at the title, Tell My Son to Hold On to His Gun. It is one that gives the reader an impression to stay strong or be on guard. In that the use of gun, here we see that a gun is used for protection and can cause harm as well. So, for the title to be a message to a child or a son to hold on to a gun, implying he shouldn't leave it but use it carefully, perhaps. The title already sets the tone for the story as one that will be a story of protection, bravery, and courage. Let's look at the setting of the story. It is set in a village called Daohonso, and Daohonso in Akan means be cautious. Evidence from the story, such as the name, the mention of the river Sebinum, which in Akan means fetch and drink. Together with the name of the village, with these people working as cocoa farmers, and you know that Ghana also has a lot of cocoa farmers, suggest so that the story is set in Ghana, West Africa. Let's not forget that Ketre Akosomo Nyantechi is also a Ghanaian. The time for the story spans between a day, even though it employs some flashback. Let's look at the point of view. So the story is written in the first person narrative point of view. The main character, Kwame, narrates the story. He uses a lot of first person pronouns such as I and we throughout the story, which enables us to identify the point of view. Let's move on to the plot analysis. The story begins with the main character, Kwame, giving his autobiography. He talks about where he lives, which is Daohonson, and also he introduces his father, who is a 68-year-old man, the richest man in the village. He also talks about his mom, who is deceased and was killed by a human-looking beast. We get to know that this beast is a killer beast and has terrorized the thick forest. As the heir of his father, Kwame works with his father on his cocoa farm. The story progresses to the rising action 
where Kwame's father tells him to go to the village for their food all alone instead of going with him as always. Kwame admits his fear of the killer beasts as they are at the farm. However, his father encourages him to be courageous. He then takes his gun and heads to the village for their food. Upon return from the village, he realizes his father is nowhere to be found. After some hesitation, he decides to enter the thick forest in search of his father. He gathers courage and enters the thick forest. The story progresses to the climax. When upon his hearing of some footsteps, he decides to climb onto a tree. Whilst on the tree, he gets to see the killer beast. Kwame shoots it strategically and several times until it dies, after which he cuts its head off and proceeds to the village. The fallen action of the story sets in. On his return to the village, he finds a piece of his father's cloth on a tree. This troubles him and gets him weeping, thinking his father has died. Then he sees his father's head. He begins to think the killer beast perhaps might have killed his father. Suddenly he hears a voice which informs him his father was killed by two palace executioners and not the killer beast. This was to cleanse him and give him the strength and courage to kill the killer beast. The voice asks him to proceed to the village with the two heads and that jubilation awaits him in the village. Also, the people of the village will not mourn his father for accepting to be sacrificed. The voice finally said to him, your father wants you to hold on to your gun. Goodbye. The story ends with his realization that everything was a dream. What an interesting story. Tell my son to hold on to his gun. And this is where we get our title from, right? At the end of the story. Now let's progress and look at the character descriptions. Kwame, he is the main character of the story. The appellation of his name Kwame is Atuapuma. He is the only child of his parents. He was two years when his mother passed on and has since lived with his father. He commenced going to farm at six years and perfected the skill of farming at 16 years. He is seen as an obedient and responsible son who, in spite of his fear of going all alone into the village for food, still obeyed his father. It was his love for his father that motivated him to search for him in the thick forest. He exhibited strength and courage by killing the killer beast of the forest. The killer beast. The killer beast is a human-looking beast which terrified and threatened the thick forest of the Dalhousie village and its environs. It killed Kwame's mother when she went to the farm. It is a huge and hairy monster of about seven feet tall. He had oval-shaped ears that dangled about. His nose pointed way above his stiff upper lip. His eyes extended beyond their normal place on his face. It usually drinks water from the Sabinian River. Kwame killed the beast by shooting it several times. Then he cut off its head. The voice. The voice is described as a strange and hoarse voice, like an echo in an empty house. It informed Kwame of how his father died and what awaited him at the village. Now let's move on and look at some literary devices. Personification. Personification is using human attributes for inanimate objects. A triumphant wave suddenly ran over my whole body. And triumphant wave definitely can't run, so that's personification. A long loud roll of thunder broke the stillness of the afternoon. A long loud roll of thunder cannot break, it doesn't have that human ability to break, so specification as well. Hyperbole. Hyperbole is extreme exaggeration. An example is when I saw his entire body swaying from side to side, anger struck me like thunder. This is way an exaggeration. 
My lips tightened in anger and tears that had welled up in my eyes began to flow freely like running water. Again, that is an exaggeration. Simile Simile is when you compare two or more things using as like or than. There was a long, loud, and heavy fall like a roar of thunder. So comparing that long, loud, heavy fall to a roar of thunder. So two things are being compared here. Then I saw a piece of cloth like that of my father's hanging on a branch of a tree. So comparing that piece of cloth to that of his father's. Tears that had welled up in my eyes began to flow freely as running water. So comparing the tears to running water. A strange and hoarse voice like an echo in an empty house. So comparing that strange and hoarse voice to an echo in an empty house. Alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds in words. So we started weeding and because we were weeding in the opposite directions. So here, W, the consonant W is repeated. Simile, I was able to handle the gun like an adult, comparing how he handled the gun to that of an adult. Then I heard a voice like my father, so the voice is being compared to that of his father's voice. When I saw his entire body swaying from side to side, anger struck me like thunder. So comparing the way the body swayed and how the anger struck him to how thunder actually echoes and comes about. I screamed, reloaded my gun and fired at him again like a sniper. So comparing how he reloaded his gun and fired to a sniper. I gave him a slow sidelong look and anger began to spread over me like fever. So again comparing um, how he felt to how fever spreads over a person. Onomatopoeia. So onomatopoeia is how sounds are mimicked. I rushed down the valley sounding the forest alarm who 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 but no avail. So who 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 is onomatopoeia. But suddenly an unknown force pushed my finger against the trigger and boom went a loud deep sound from the gun. So boom here is onomatopoeia. A roar of thunder. So roar. That is also an homotopia. The blood began oozing down his mouth and nose. So oozing is also an homotopia. I smashed the monster's head against the tree. Smashed. Oxymoron. An oxymoron is when you put two opposing words side by side. The loud silence and the look on my father's face. So loud and silence are two opposing words. Imagery. Imagery is when you use descriptive elements to paint a picture in the minds of the reader. A huge and hairy monster of about seven feet. He had oval shaped ears that dangled about. His nose pointed way above his stiff upper lip. His eyes extended beyond their normal place on his face. Also, there's the use of repetition. So there's a lot of repetition. Be courageous, be courageous, Kwame. Father, father, father. I will be, father, I will be. Shed no tears, son, shed no tears. They do, my son, they do. All these are forms of repetitions. Then symbolism, using one idea to represent another. So we can say Kwame's father represents courage and bravery in the story. Courage and persistence leads to success. 
Without courage, it will be difficult for one to come out of their comfort zone and do something exceptional. And in the story, Kwame was afraid of going to bring he and his father's food from the village all alone due to perhaps the terror of the killer beast. However, he was able to master courage upon his father's advice and he went, brought the food and was able to even take that bold decision to go into the thick forest and look for his father. Again, he showed a lot of courage when he was able to take his gun and actually kill the killer beast and cut off his head. Mommy's father also served as a fearless and courageous man who offered himself to be sacrificed for the rest of the villages and people to be free from the killer beast. This story teaches us a lesson to be courageous and never give up to attain our dreams and desire. Let's look at some likely examination questions. In which part of the forest did Kwame shoot the killer beast? How did Kwame's father die? According to the story, what is the forest alarm? Describe three characters from the story. Mention and explain two themes of the story. Identify any five literary devices in the story. Read the extract below and answer questions 16 to 18. This bastard must die. I screamed, reloaded my gun, and fired at him again. Then finally, there was a long, loud, and heavy fall like the roar of thunder. So let's look at the first question. Why did he kill the bastard? And the bastard here refers to what? Like the roar of thunder is an example of state a character trait the speaker revealed in the story. So this brings us to the end of our analysis. We have looked at the title, Tell My Son to Hold On to His Gun, the setting of the story, Downhoso Village, and it spans through it the day, the plot analysis, the point of view, which is a first person narrative point of view, the character development, literary devices, and themes. We've also looked at some likely examination questions. I hope this lesson was useful. Put in your comments and questions and I'll respond to you. Do like, share and subscribe to this channel. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.